Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We are the pacemakers. My name is Fiorella Cabello. Can we address, please? Andrew Watkins. Taylor Steve. Susan Nesson. Kenneth Rupert. We are qualifying the empathy suit. Let me start by the background. In 20 years, 20% 20 of the U.S. population will be over the age of 65. Since this is a large group, it's very important to understand their needs. Weakness, poor endurance, and slowness are some factors in loss of ability. It also generates mental distress that can lead to depression, falls, dependence, and even potential death. So common activities such as walking is a combination of musculoskeletal, sensory, cardiorespiratory, and neural system. To quantify the impact of the empathy suit, we will ask our volunteer to walk so we can perform two different analyses. Our volunteer must meet the following, the following requirements. First, should be over the age of 75, should be able to perform daily activities such as walking and breathing himself, but should also have some trouble performing simple tasks such as tying shoes and picking up stuff from the floor. Um, so this is just a quick overview from the first semester that we have. It's the basic topic area of um, frailty in the elderly population and they have a new set of needs down to our problem statement, which is our team is going to develop a method to quantify the impact that uh, empathy suits such as the MIC Agnes suit has on elderly individuals' movements or young people's movements to mimic elderly individuals and see how accurate they are. Um, so our aim is to create an accurate em empathy suit and collect data of said suit. Um, and so our objective is we want to decrease range of motion, we want to increase slowness, um, which are both big measures of frailty. So, and we're going to acquire motion capture data from one of our own um, subjects, at least one elderly person, at least one young person with and without the suit. Um, so we're breaking this down into three parts. Part one, we're going to make the prototype, which is the Agnes suit. So that's already been done. Um, and part two is data collection. So we've done all of our data collection, or and most of the preliminary for our young subject, Taylor. Isn't he a pretty young subject? <laughs> um, so he's, he's great for the motion capture, which we decided to go with. Instead of IMUs, we changed over to motion capture because um, of reasons we'll explain later, it's better with the analysis. Um, but he's great for it because he's very long and slender, so it gives lots of points for the, the camera to pick up. And um, we're going to use that with the a scoring system, which is used by just looking at how the person's moved for some of the more complicated music movements, and then the bio biomechanical gait model, which is what the motion capture system applies to all the data points it gets in order to see how a person is moving. Um, and so, can you move to the project goal? Yes. So the project goal, first of all, we want to understand the limitations that seniors feel um, as they age, <coughs> and as the process occurs and very accommodative in their everyday life. And with, with this being said, those limitations can help develop uh, educational models to promote healthy, better living and lifestyles, and uh, and possibly delay the aging aging process. Um, okay. And here I have we have our schedule. And the highlighted parts are the, you know, analyzed data from the preliminary test that was with Taylor, and then we, we got it down to more of a, more of a set way to analyze and collect the data, and then the analyzed data on the second run, as well as, and then, well, the problem is that our dates are a little off considering that we have problems with our previous system with the IMUs. and so we are on track. We we adjusted and we are on track to be able to collect data help with the, take the information to the elderly and then also collect a second run and then still be able to finish out on November 1st. So the, this is like we talked about the analyze, the data analysis, we have another program that we, we've already collected the data, but we have to put it through a model in order to get the join angle and all of that, but we have the data we're going to use and the program, we just have to run it through that program. Um, so, and, oh, yeah. Andrew? So uh, one of our first procedures is uh, time up in Gotan. 
So basically, as it sounds, you stand up and go. So you're going to sit down, stand up, walk in straight lines, perform a turn, walk back and sit down. And uh, so with that, here's an example with the suit and then without the suit. Um, there is a degree of uh, uh, it shows a slowness and then as opposed to fastness right here. And then next we have, this is our uh, scoring sheet. So like if you're at, uh, at 18 or below on our score sheet, you're pretty much at high risk. And then low risk just means like a healthy young person such as all of us here uh, would have uh, low, uh, low risk. So this is our scoring sheet. So here we have the balance sheet, then we have this, uh, the gait sheet. And so we did our preliminary with uh, Taylor, and this is how he scored. So to the left, we have the uh, no suit, and then to the right, we have the suit on. And then, yeah. So with the gait score, we got a 12 out of 12. And then the balance score, we got a 13 out of 16. And then we combine those to get a total score of 25, which is uh, too bad, uh, low risk, obviously. And then for our gate, we had a, I believe it was a seven out of, yeah, we had a seven out of uh, a 16, which is really low. And then we had a six out of 12. So when you add those up, it gets a 13, which is too bad, really high risk for a fall. And, and this yeah. is more of a qualitative kind of measure, but it, this is the type of thing that would be used by health professionals to assume how much a person, how likely a person is to fall. Yeah, this is how we found like our tests, really. And it, it just, it supports the ideas that are put forth in the gain analysis. So it's more supplementary um, yeah, as far as data goes, but. Yeah, to give us good, uh, a good base to where we want to like approach our project to uh, collect data. So next slide we have uh, just an example where, how much it affects his balance. He's, uh, we just told him to walk in a straight line and off the back, he was, you know, he had to use his arm for balance, and then pretty much his, uh, I think it affected his right ankle more than anything. He wasn't able to, every step, he was kind of going to the right. So that's just a good example of that. Um, and so now we're going to get into what our actual quantitative data is. So I know that you would prefer that we have more tests, but we can't, the, some of the things that we would have to collect data points for, we need an actual piece of software to put it through to make them significant. Um, and so there's plenty of biomechanical models that we can apply through software and then process that further to get things such as range of motion and speed and step length and all of these established quantities that uh, people who study the biomechanics look at. So the, these are all the statistically standardized types of quantities that we want to look at to determine how mobile a person is. And so gain analysis is, a, is kind of the gold standard of looking at that, because um, it's easy to perform, it's low risk, where we didn't want to have too crazy of tests for these elderly subjects, because a lot of them are frail. They would be frail, and we don't want anyone getting hurt trying to perform a test. So we have them just do a walk. We can get lots of information from a walk, and through the, the through applying the biomechanical model. Um, so this is just a walk. They walk six steps, make a turn, and walk back six steps. It seems incredibly simple, but as you can see here, there is so many points of things and pieces to look at, from how much your knees can move, to how well your balance is, as we saw with the Panetti score, um, how someone, they can, it sees their sway in their walk, which is an indicator of balance, and, many things that would be affected as you get older. Um, so first, this is our whole data analysis process. It's, it's several systems and several programs that we had to run it through. We had the Bicon Motion Capture System, which was the actual cameras, um, and then we had the Nexus 2, which it took that raw data from the motion capture and put it through the Nexus 2 and applied the model. So we can actually see a person on our screen moving based on those reflective markers. And then we have Polygon, which takes that model and then finds step length, torque, angle, um, joint angles, and all these very valuable points that we want to look at. So those are the statistically significant valuable points we want. And here's our Vicon. What we see, um, we have a 12 camera system. It's nice, big, pretty, fancy, got a lot going on. And it paints us with like a 10 meter by 10 meter area. It's an awesome little system. How much was it? You said 30 
data that 